Peace and blessings. What a blessing to, to be with you now here in the third week of Lent. We rejoice because in many ways we are nearing uh, our destination. And Easter is our destination. Uh, brothers and sisters, this third week of Lent brings us to a particular point of contemplation in the Sacred Heart. That the Sacred Heart is pierced. Perhaps many of you have uh, seen a popular movie, Black Panther. Uh, and there's a scene in the movie where the son is speaking to the father and the father says the following, a man who has not prepared his children for his own death has failed as a father. Have I ever failed you? A man, a father, prepares his children for his own death. What does this mean? Isn't this somewhat morbid? Isn't this something that we've grown past? Uh, in fact, there's something about this that connects to our very being. But to prepare your children for your own death is in a way accepting that your heart must be pierced. I remember a few years ago, we were beginning a ministry in the South Bronx, and it was a homeless shelter. And we had carefully studied what sort of shelters have worked, what was our intended goal, what were we able to put in, how were we able to help the men who had come to the shelter, and we built it. And it was a good plan, a very good plan. But when men began to arrive, it wasn't working. It's funny how you can plan something in your mind, but when it is expressed concretely, it doesn't have the same mm, that, you, that you thought it had. What was happening is that men were coming, but it felt like they weren't changing that the program wasn't succeeding. Some would come for a couple of days, some would leave, uh, and it wasn't enacting a, a lasting change in their life. And I remember thinking, what are we doing wrong? Because everything is carefully laid out. It's supposed to be working. So we were going back to our theories and going back to the studies and going back to, to, to things uh, and asking, maybe it's just the Bronx because you know, there's not too many things that just work in the Bronx. And then I came across a sermon uh, by Pope Benedict the Sixteenth when he was Cardinal Ratzinger. Uh, and he was preaching about Peter and Paul. And he said that Paul had a missionary heart. And a missionary heart is a heart that's pierced. And I was like, what, what does this mean? And he went on to explain a heart that is holy, a heart that loves, is not necessarily a heart that is pierced, but a heart that is missionary, a heart that wants to bring something to another person will be pierced because what you hope for the other person doesn't always get translated in the same way. And when I read that, I realized this was my expectation that I was reading into these men who were coming to this homeless shelter. And I just stopped doing that and I just began to listen to them to hear them, to be with them. And then they began to ask for baptism, ask for the sacraments, to the point where we were shocked. We were shocked. Pope Francis, in his letter Patris Corde, says, Joseph's found, Joseph found happiness, not in mere self-sacrifice, but in self gift. In him, we never see frustration, but only trust. Our world today needs fathers. Every true vocation is born of the gift of one's self, which is the fruit of mature sacrifice. Mature sacrifice. 
Notice the difference between sacrifice and mature sacrifice is very clear. One can very easily give of oneself. One can, can uh, sacrifice. One can deny oneself. But is it mature? Many times there's people who give themselves to their work, who give themselves even to the church. But a mature sacrifice is something that you know who you are and there is a relationship of love. There is a reciprocity and you give of yourself not counting the cost because you love the person that you are with. This is what Jesus did. This is what happens in marriages or what's supposed to be happening. This is what's happening in holiness. When a soul looks upon God and receives the love that God has given and in response out of justice gives everything. This being pierced is in a way a type of death to self for the life of the other, but at the same time being life for the self and life for the other. So it seems like there's a death, but in reality, it's a life. <laughs> Let me explain. Uh, we have different notions of freedom. And uh, perhaps, if I may, uh, use another movie reference, uh, Braveheart. Perhaps you've seen it. Another Mel Gibson movie. Uh, he dies crying out, freedom, but he's being hung, drawn, and quartered. His intestines are being pulled out from him, but he's yelling out, freedom. He would die rather than be captive, be an existential slave. And there's a type of freedom that is willing to lay down even your own life for the sake of something greater, maybe something a little bit more approachable. There's a Pixar movie, Wally. -E. Maybe you've seen it. It's about these robots who um, uh, fall in love. It's a Pixar movie. But there's a line in this movie which uh, the, the captain of this, this spaceship says, I don't want to survive. I want to live. Basically saying that to survive and play it safe, you can stay where you're at. But to live and to thrive, it includes a risk. It includes, if you will, being pierced. We have a friary in Nicaragua, and we're chaplains to the hospital and to the prison there. And uh, one of our brothers was celebrating Mass in the prison and preaching on the gospel of loving even your enemy. And uh, obviously a, a tough gospel to preach, but this brother did such an incredible job. It really moved hearts. But our brother wasn't aware of a situation that everyone else in the prison knew about. You see, there was a, a man leading music, and he was wonderful, you know, a, a leader. He would teach the Bible to some of the other inmates, and he played the guitar for Mass. And he heard the words of this sermon preached by one of our Franciscan brothers. But what the Franciscan brother didn't know is that there was a new inmate in the prison. And this inmate was convicted for murder. The murder of the brother of the man who was leading music. Everyone else knew it. The tension you could feel. But the priest wasn't aware. So after this sermon that moved hearts about how to see your enemy and even to try to love him, how to seek forgiveness even for the greatest thing because God forgives us of our sins. And so we should extend that forgiveness to others. Well, after the sermon, the priest sat down and then instead of playing the offertory song, this man stood up walked to the center of the makeshift chapel and said, I have something to say. I could just imagine the priest thinking like, whoa, what is going on? He said, I have something to say. 
inspired by this gospel, I need to say something. And then he called them by name. We'll call him Jose. Jose, with all my heart, I forgive you. I forgive any wrong that you have done to me or to my family. I forgive you. And I ask for forgiveness. All the people were completely silent. You could hear a pin drop. And then all the faces turned over to this man who will call Jose. And Jose was just stoic, quiet. He stood up. He began to walk to this man. All the guards began to get ready. And then he just embraced him and said, I am sorry. In the name of Jesus, I'm sorry. And everybody erupted in applause. Yay! <laughs> the priest, the priest was in awe. My brothers and sisters, being pierced for the Lord is in fact something that gives life. Many times forgiveness of someone who doesn't deserve it or someone who's difficult to forgive is like your heart being pierced. And it is so that there may be life, life for that person, but also life for yourself. There is life when we forgive. There is life when we lay our lives down. There is life when we give of ourselves, for we know that there is something greater than just ourselves. So our heart must be pierced as the sacred heart is pierced. In John Paul II's Radiance of the Fatherhood, there is the um, inciting action of the play. So you have Adam who's kind of like lost in his own thoughts. And you have his daughter, Monica, who's longing for her dad to pay attention to her, to listen to her, to just be present to her. And this man is so lost in his own thoughts. Uh, and even when he is with his daughter and there's a scene that happens uh, that uh, he's walking with her. And he's like thinking of all these things. And then he sees like a, a, a snake come out. And he just thinks, oh my gosh, the child, I must protect the child. And he stands in front of the child. And then in the style of John Paul II, we hear what he thought and we hear what the daughter thought. What he thought was like, I don't even know why I did that. I just knew I had to do that. And like, okay, all right. And then the daughter is just like, she experiences love. She experiences being valued. She experiences being protected. She experiences what it means to be a daughter. I'll just briefly read. Adam says, Two thoughts just came to me. The first thought, fathers will not return to themselves. So, God, therefore, you, you are not wanted. Go, mix with the crowd and lose yourself in it. The second thought, fathers return through their children. The father always receives in the soil of a child's soul. Then the mother, the third character, says, Do not be afraid. This must hurt. It is a pain like the pain of birth. A woman knows infinitely more about giving birth than a man. She knows it particularly through the suffering that accompanies childbearing. Still, Motherhood is, is an expression of fatherhood. It must always go back to the father to take from him all that it expresses. In this consists the radiation of fatherhood. Let me explain. There is something about giving life that is connected to God the Father's creative act. But it is like a giving birth. And I've never given birth. I've been kind of close to women who have given birth and whew, quite an experience. But perhaps this is also a reason why women tend to be a little bit more spiritual than men in general. Because women understand this. 
that to give life means to be pierced, to use this metaphor of the sacred heart, and to see the life beyond the pain is how spirituality can, re can reach a depth greater than just a check the box spirituality. Meaning, sometimes we go to church and we're just there. We know there's more, but to go deeper um, requires more, means a different thing. And this, this proximity in general that women have with childbirth makes it logical for them or, or clear for them. Of course, you know, that's what must happen to give life. Maybe for a man it's not as clear, but there is a clarity in a good father, like we heard from the quote from Black Panther, that a father must lay his own life down so that his children may be, may take his place. Joseph uh, didn't see it just merely as self-sacrifice. He saw his place in the salvation history story. And he was a father to Jesus. And this gift of himself was mature sacrifice. Going back to the story of um, radiation of the fatherhood, this conversation between Adam and Monica, he was thinking, he was saying, I look at your features and the way they are formed. I look at the impenetrable sanctuary of a child. I still remain lonely. Suddenly, a rustle wakes me, a viper. One must protect this child. I am moved. I know something happened, but I do not yet know what. Meaning, in John Paul II's incredible intellect, he was breaking down how even if you have children, you can see the goodness in them and you can still be stuck in yourself. Maybe you've experienced this. Maybe you have children. And in having children, you know that it has challenged you to be better. And you've become a better person, but still you did not expect what happened. You thought that once you reach a certain level of your life, then things would change. Things would get better. Then you realize that you're still you're still who you are. And then something happens that challenges you, that, that just breaks you out of this and you, and you react, surprisingly maybe, in a good way. And this provokes a deeper response. This piercing has the potential to lead you deeper. And the masters in, of the spiritual life have grown to love this piercing. Now, please understand me. I'm not talking about all these other piercings that people are doing in all different parts of their body. But even that, even that is speaking. Why does someone pierce their body in all these different places? They're saying something. They're saying something. It has a meaning even if they are not able to articulate it. I'm not saying we should do that, but I'm listening to what they're saying through what they're doing. There is something deeper when we give ourselves to another because of love of God. There is something that happens. There is life that is given. When we give forgiveness to another, it is almost Guess what I'm saying is that forgiveness is procreative. Sacrifice gives life. Now, what is sacrifice? It comes from two Latin words, sacra, holy, facere, to make. To make holy. 
When we offer something as a sacrifice, we're offering it in essence to God so that it may be made holy. This is the reason why we enter into Lent and fast, pray, and give alms. It's not because so much we feel better. If that's where you are, then, then that's the beginning stage. There is more. And when you see your offering, your gift of self, your gift of prayer, your gift of this offering of less food, in the grand scheme of God's heavenly plan for salvation. And you know that in some way, your gift will bring life. So, my brothers and sisters, let us protect. But in order to protect, we must be willing to be pierced. The man in prison took the risk in asking for forgiveness that there would not be reconciliation. To be pierced, we are confronted with our own weakness. What if I cannot? Ah, maybe I shouldn't do this. I'm doubting myself. Thoughts of pain, vengeance, or um, being appropriate, and, you know, we don't do that, run through your mind, and this is natural. But despite it all, God accomplishes far greater things when we seek reconciliation. This man asking for forgiveness and giving forgiveness to them to the man who killed his brother, brought every single inmate deeper because they saw the gospel being lived in real time. But it begins with our willingness to be pierced. After Adam, the father, uh, steps in front of the snake to protect his child, Monica, the daughter, says, I know that fear has left me. You have taken it all upon yourself. The viper disappeared in the grass somewhere. You must have saved my life. What are you thinking about? These little acts of love take away the anxiety and fear of those whom we are trying to love. And even if we're unable to break through our own stuff, that piercing of your heart can accomplish a lot more than we can just through normal thought processes. My brothers and sisters, let us contemplate the sacred heart that is pierced and let us go into this, this wound of Christ, this wound of love. Be sheltered in his love. God bless you.